I hate making videos like this. And it feels like I'm doing it more now than ever, but sadly, I'm here to report that the Netflix original series Inside Job was cancelled last week. It's a troubling sign for the animation industry as a whole, and it's not the only absurd cancellation. In fact, it seems to be one of many. So without further ado, let's talk about it. So Inside Job is an incredibly popular Netflix original series by Shion Takuchi. There's incredible people working on it, a lot of really talented people, most notably Alex Hirsch is a huge part of this project. And if you were to ask me, I would say that this was an incredibly popular show. It had a huge following online, it was consistently hitting the top 10 whenever it premiered. I would see it all over the internet, and it seemed to only be getting bigger with the episodes they dropped a few months ago. That really elevated the show from where it was, and got me even more excited by the future of the show. Fortunately, as of now, there will not be one. Xi'an took to Twitter to say, I'm heartbroken to confirm that Netflix has decided to cancel season two of Inside Job. Over the years, these characters have become real people to me, and I'm devastated not to be able to watch them grow up. Megan and Brett deserve to get their ending and finally find happiness. And I would have loved to have been able to share what was in store with you all. To everyone who watched, thank you for coming along the ride. Even though I'm sad, it helps to know that there's people out there who cared just as much about these characters as me. Now, like I said, Inside Job was pretty popular after part one. Despite the Rick and Morty comparisons, which I feel like you could say about a lot of current animation these days anyways, and season 2 was picked up, part 2 of season 1 dropped and was in the Netflix top 10. If you watch it, then it's almost inescapable on TikTok and Instagram, and the engagement on these posts are insane. It's a really popular show. Most frustratingly, part 2 ended on a massive cliffhanger that as of now will never be resolved. So why was it cancelled? While we may never know for sure, especially with how sudden it seemed to be, it honestly might just boil down to the usual two factors. Money, because animation is really expensive, and to put it bluntly, Netflix just got what they needed out of it. This is more than a typical pattern, this seems to be like the only way Netflix does things now. They're famous for canceling shows after two seasons. They've done this to Altered Carbon, Sense8, The OA, and even Luke Cage. It's not just animation, even though it has affected animation too, like Tuca and Birdie. It seems like everything besides Big Mouth and Stranger Things gets the axe after just two seasons. Now this has to do with a lot of really complicated statistics and I'm not going to claim to understand how Netflix works on the inside, but according to a Wired article, it looks at two data points within the first seven and the first 28 days of a show being available on the service. According to the article, the first is starters, or households that just watch one episode of the series, and the second point is completers, which is subscribers who finish an entire season. I don't think I have to point out that this weird, data-driven, robotic way of measuring the success of a show is not that effective, clearly, but also I think it's worth noting that a lot of people would argue that Netflix is just focused on building up a huge catalog. In fact, most streaming services in these quote unquote streaming wars see that as a top priority. So when you have two seasons of a show, it's easier for them to just go find something else to add and throw that in their endless catalog that most people couldn't even dream of sorting through it's so big just so they can boast about the amount of shows they have. Again, this is a mix of sources and speculation and also just what I've seen personally, but it's definitely frustrating as a fan of television and specifically animation. Inside Job was also produced in-house at Netflix Animation, which more or less began to collapse last year because, again, animation is expensive and streaming is suffering, so despite its popularity, it may have just never stood a chance at surviving. But that doesn't justify cancelling a season they already ordered. Now, predictably, there is a lot of backlash online. Fans have rallied across social media, fighting for Inside Job to get an ending with the hashtag RenewInsideJob and hashtag SaveInsideJob, trending almost immediately after the confirmation that the show was cancelled, amassing tens of thousands of tweets as we speak. But this isn't the only animated production to have a second second season just flat out erased from existence, as other adult animated series Pantheon also got cancelled a similar way. The buzzed about animated drama had a two season order. I heard a lot of people talking about this show, I heard a lot of good things, and though I didn't get a chance to watch it, it looks like now I never will. That's because Pantheon got pulled from streaming at the end of December on its host service AMC+, despite being an AMC Plus original. And according to sources online, the second season, which is already finished, just won't ever Ever get released. Now, Pantheon seemed to be sabotaged on a deeper level, like AMC greenlit it after seeing a surge in demand for adult animation, but lost confidence due to how much it was grounded in being a sci-fi drama, with an invincible-esque art style instead of the usual adult animated comedies that take off in popularity. And, as far as I know, it doesn't have the shock value that Invincible has either. Real quick, Johnny Tuchel has made a great video promoting Pantheon, you should check it out. Honestly, it just seems like the streaming bubble in general has popped, with so many companies finding themselves in debt 
set and struggling to hold on to subscribers, as well as grow and get new ones. Animation is an easy target, because despite its high cost, it's not nearly as respected or appreciated as cheaper to make live action content. But even live action content's been getting screwed over, especially scripted dramas. It's the reality TV shows that stand the test of time due to how cheap they are to produce, require no scripting, and still get millions of viewers. Canceling these shows, and in some cases, even removing them from streaming services, also allows these platforms to circumvent paying royalties and residuals, which for animation, unions need to pay healthcare. Inside Job nor Pantheon deserve this fate and should have been treated much, much better. Things are clearly dire right now, and there's way too much to unpack for this video alone. Last year, we at Roundtable began working on an animation documentary that breaks down everything going on in the industry, but as the situation looked more and more bleak, it was a little overwhelming. But the first part of the doc is coming out soon, and Vox wanted to show y'all a little sneak peek for the rest of the video. So without further ado, enjoy. I thought cartoons were all made by computer. Oh, this battle scene has a thousand horses! I have to draw a thousand horses! Great! Wow, you really posed this out. We can't pay your salary, but uh, we can give you free laps. No money means no animation! Get it off! Get it off! What the heck is going on? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever wanted to work in animation? If the answer is yes, here's a follow-up. What do you love about animation? Is it the magic of seeing new worlds being brought to life by pen and paper? Oh, a uh, pen and tablet. And Adobe After Effects. Oh, I guess Blender too. Is it the larger-than-life stories that effortlessly hit close to home, in ways big and small? Stories that can only work in this medium? Is it the charming characters? The personifications of our strongest qualities, the good, the bad, and the weird. Characters who are able to form a connection with their audience in a way those in a live action production never could. Come on, the older you get, who are you gonna find more relatable than Squidward, Dario, or Grunkle Stan? Maybe your love for animation is just an extension of a bigger love for art. Or like all great philosophers, you simply like watching the funny drawings move. There are a ton of reasons to love animation and all the feelings it evokes. So chances are, those reasons why you love animation and why you want to work in animation are the exact same reasons those in the industry do what they do today. When you really enjoy something, getting the chance to work in that field sounds like a dream come true. So why is everyone in the industry emotionally drained, worried about their future, and ready to quit? All right, people, let's start at the beginning one last time. Making a cartoon has never been a pitch-perfect process. Nothing's perfect, except for those delicious $1 churros from Costco. But things were, at a point, manageable. There was a reasonable amount of time for someone to, well, do their job, and only their job. On top of stable job security, living wages, I'd say equal pay, but our corporate overlords have always treated that like a joke. Look at it like group projects. When everyone pulls their weight, you're chilling. You give your due diligence and still have the time to focus on other things. If like one or two people have something come up and your teacher won't extend the deadline, having to pick up the slack can feel a little inconvenient, but it's not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. However, if that energy is uneven, someone's doing more work than what they signed up for, or deadlines get shorter, it's gonna take a toll. And the animation industry has taken several tolls by now. Time's up, SpongeBob. This is where we talk about the root of all evil. Money! Animation is extremely expensive, and a lot of that money goes into scheduling and staff, not just final animation. <laughs> what was the budget for this? It looks like garbage, bro. I don't think what you're saying is how budgets work. You see, it's more about allocating the talent and resources needed to efficiently run a production. Oh my god, shut up. Oh, nerd. Uh, oh, okay. Time is literally money. Employees cost money. Animation equipment and software cost money. Voices cost money. Music costs money. The cereal bar and fridge full of LaCroix cost money. You get the idea. Every stage of animation costs a buttload of money. But you see, corporations love doing this little thing called 
making as much money as possible while spending as little money as possible. And animation is often seen as disposable in entertainment. So over the many, many years, productions have cut corners to save that bread by ruining the mental well-beings of their talent. Deadlines get smaller, jobs get cut, and the duties pile up on everyone else. Would you mind explaining your technique? Suddenly, storyboard artists are expected to draw more of an episode, while basically doing four other jobs in the process. Again, on limited time, with wages that don't reflect the amount of work that was truly put in. Let me remind you, most of these studios are based in California, which is known for an insanely high cost of living in the never-ending age of inflation. The rest of the team does not have it that much better either. A lot of these productions expect a lot, but give little in return. But hey, at least your name is on the television screen for approximately half a second. Hang it on the fridge, Ma! This has led to burnout, unpaid overtime, and debilitating effects on the talent's health of both the physical and mental variety. People are tired of it! Thus, animation professionals working in the industry have made an outcry to make their stance known. Studios must give them better working conditions, give them wages that reflect the amount of work they put in, wages that are sustainable for a 2022 world. The studios need to cooperate with the Animation Guild to give these artists a new deal for animation. Okay, there's a long story made short, now let's dig a little deeper. That being said guys, it's just sad news all around, and I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. This is an animation news video, and I'll see you next time. Peace.